Howdy y'all, I'm Ice Gold, and today I'm going to be responding to Liam is a Vibe's most recent video. Uh, and if you were thinking this was going to be about some controversy or drama or beef or any of that, you got clickbaited. This is about his Ice PvP video. So in essence, he went over a bunch of different problems that Ice has in PvP at the moment. And as an Ice main myself, uh, <laughs> I actually gave him some talking points to work with in this video. And... I watched what he had to say, and he had some good points, but he missed a lot of my personal complaints about ICE and the problems that it has, and will probably continue to have um, after the fall update happens in the coming days. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> I've got a lot to cover if this video ends up being half an hour long. My fault. ICE is just real bad right now, so let's get started. So, per the Rochambeau wheel rules, every school, minus balance, but you know, balance is just outside of it anyway, every school is supposed to counter two other schools, and Ice is supposed to counter Death and Storm. Now, countering Death is kind of a no-brainer because, you know, you have spells like Glacial Fortress, if you do this and take up a threefold, you can set up one of these super easily afterwards, so... This is how we beat death, but more on them later. But Storm is, ironically, a bigger problem for Ice than death is. At the moment, Ice has, like, basically just this card, Frostbite. It's, uh, this is the best card that a regular Ice not doing some sort of niche strat can use. Um, and Storm, being the overtime countering school, <laughs> like they are, can just crack in this and they'll have a buffed hit ready to go the very next turn so it's just this is pretty much our only leverage um but we kind of we we kind of have to use it even on a storm um so it's just it's it's rough because they'll just counter this and then just send a hit right back and it's pain so yeah um additionally shad's costing two is also just an extreme nerf to ice because ice is one of the schools that relies on their shads a bunch a bond of a weaver is probably arguably ice's best spell uh just because it does all that damage and it puts a tower shield on you afterward so it's a good offense defense move but since it now costs two shads like pretty much all we have is just this <laughs> So, and like a storm will counter this. A storm has a much harder time with this as opposed to this. But because we can't use this as quickly, we it's like storm has effectively become our third counter school because we're using fire identity instead of ice identity. And that's how storm counters us. Um, in terms of like stats, we are still competitive with them, and our uh, Ice versus Storm matchup does tilt in favor of us, but it's still... We have a much harder time with Storm than Death, which is kind of backwards <laughs> compared to every other school, so... I don't know. We'll see if uh, the Water update brings with it some change in terms of that, but I did some test run PvP against Sauce's Storm, and it... Uh, didn't go so well. <laughs> I tried to frostbite a bunch and um, he would just crack them all off and send better hits at me because, you know, Storm has a library and Ice doesn't. So, alright, time to go to the next issue. So back to what Liam was saying. Um, he did touch on, you know, balance and gearhead and hydra and all that and how they are basically uh, a much better counter school to us than a school like fire would be but he mostly talked about how ice just feels weak and that we're not actually that weak and i don't know about you team but our damage is capped at 158 i'm actually three over uh and then our peers is capped at 40 and i'm one over it's it's a whole thing ice feels weak is what he said but i think that ice feels weak because we are weak and I'll go into more on that again later, but for the time being, it's just his main thing was that ice is pretty much hopeless against balance because 
Balance just has a lot of resist, and we don't have a lot of pierce, and that his whole thing was that resist is too high. And Liam being a Storm main, you know, I would expect a take like this, because Storm really gets shafted in terms of, like, defensive stats and all that. Uh, so, the belief that the resist is too high, I can see where he's coming from, but being inherently weak like this compared to everybody else is just that's what's really bogging us down we can't hit as hard as other schools even even other schools just with the same general like dpp or resist identity just because we don't have damage or pierce so it's just it's it's tough out here Liam also touched on Life's hit and heals just outvaluing us, despite having the same damage and DPP. I can understand that, honestly, uh, because it's like if I take, you know, an A-bomb, and it does, let's say, like, 2k damage, and, you know, the Life Wizard, they wand off my Tower Shield, and they send a Hungry Caterpillar back, and it does maybe 1700, um... So the A-bomb, it did more damage, but the heal over time that they get from it could heal for like, I don't know, 1,200? <laughs> so that's a 2,900 value spell, which is 900 higher than what I would get as an ice, and I think that's a problem. Uh, but, I mean, life has life just has its own issues, so... When he talked about this, I'll say this much, I, I fully agreed that ice versus life despite being neutral on the Rochambeau wheel, is really just hopeless for ice, but more on that later. Now, there are definitely some good things about ice. Uh, I will say that Frostbite in its current state is very strong for 5 pips. It's a good overtime, as long as, you know, it doesn't get countered. Um, and it'll become better once Flat Resist is done away with in the Fall update. So I am excited for that, but I mean, I have my own issues with how <laughs> good Frostbite really is. But uh, we also have a good Shield Gambit in our Scion. It does good damage at base, um, but then the actual Gambit doing 1705 base is very, very strong. And I'm honestly just really glad we have a Shield Gambit <laughs> because these are very, very good right now. So yeah, I like, I like having a solid hit that I can rely on uh, if I just do my thing and spam dry shields but another thing that we have that other schools don't is this pet here the blimp buddy this gives two 35 bubbles which no other school can get so an ice is pretty much guaranteed a win in the bubble war uh, if you count you know like dooms and stuff if you're going against the school with eight bubbles we at least have that and that can help our damage out quite a bit uh, we also have this treasure card, Tamauji, which does, you know, 625 for 705 ice damage. Uh, never mind the fact that it is only 25 <laughs> base damage higher than Colossus, uh, which is much more accessible. But I, one thing I am surprised, though, about uh, Tamauji is that it's not banned <laughs> like most of our cards are. Um, our library is extremely small because most of our cards are just banned. I mean, Polar Swarm, you know, it's it's, it's banned. <laughs> it's like, a school like Death has Black Widow, which is a three pip over time, but Ice can't have that because, you know, Ratbeard. Well team, now I'll go ahead and touch on the talking points that I gave Liam for his video that I don't feel like he talked enough about, or maybe misunderstood a little. So, first on the list, uh, because I sent him seven <laughs> talking points, uh, is gonna be, Appearance and damage being astronomically lower than everyone else. Liam talked about our stats feeling low, but our stats really and truly are just so much lower than everyone else. Uh, you know, life, for reference, has a damage cap of 162 and a pierce cap of 44, uh, both of which are four higher than Ice's uh, while having the same DPP and just better and more valuable spells. Um, Ice being 158 damage and 40 pierce as aforementioned. The other thing, the second thing, is that with the new update, health is going up, but damage is not. And that makes the first problem worse. And, you know, like I said, this is mainly for Wallaroo. I have seen the new stat caps around and seen that Ice's new damage cap is 159. So, you know, that's plus one. I don't even have to replace any gear for that. And our new pierce cap is 42, which is an increase of two. So... 
you know, <laughs> 42 pierce, it's like I'm still not hitting uh, the life pierce uh, cap that exists right now because, you know, whiz. And I think this is extremely stupid since we'll be lagging behind by even more. Uh, I mean, with the resist caps and all that, you know, at least no one can ward to us anymore, but against the death, for example, if I can get 75 resist, it's not nearly as much of a counter matchup as it once was. We may have more health, but Death Wizard's health is going up right along with us, and their stats are going to be just infinitely better than ours. Uh, they might have 5 less resist, but they have like 20 extra damage and something like 8 to 10 extra pierce, which I think will continue, so... That's uh, <laughs> that's real cool. King's Isle's golden child right there. And the, the new square health jewels are not helping matters much either. It just widens the gap between how many hits it takes to, for an ice to kill someone versus how many hits it takes a myth to kill someone. Uh, because, you know, as a myth, you could you could do like uh, the Divum Troll Cyclops type deal. Uh, and it would do mass. <laughs> like... For, for that little pips, just uh, sending that into a Cyclops for an extra 50 trap, into a troll for an extra 50%, it's like that's just insane damage that a myth can do. Meanwhile, an ice, of course, you know, like we don't have much to rely on, we basically just have to frostbite and tamauji our opponents down, and it's not, it's not super reliable, um, and ice is just going to struggle even more with that in the new meta. I did touch on this briefly, but Ice really just has a very small library of cards. There are new strats that you can do, but we're still basically just reduced to the usual Frostbite and Weaver. Tamauji is nice, it's a nice little hit, but it's it's just one more card, uh, <laughs> as opposed to just the huge array of cards a school like Balance, for example, could have. We do have our gambits. Uh, we do have, you know, Everwinter Oni, which can be good. And then obviously, you know, Kellen Sicy Gaze, our Scion is good. That's really about it. We have our Overtimes, our Shad, and, you know, Tamauji, <laughs> and then our gambits. But yeah, I mean, most of our utility and high damage treasure cards are banned, while other schools get off scot free. Like, I'm thinking, you know, Black Widow, Crocopatra, Ember Everburn, etc. And I don't think those cards should be banned, but there is a major library problem with Ice compared to other schools because of that. I think it's really just a matter of time before uh, Tamauji gets banned. And, you know, older viewers of mine, like the OG crew back in the Julo days, they remember, you know, things like Ice Elf. This was really good back in the day, uh, but it got banned. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, Storm Elf and Fire Elf... I mean, Fire, I can understand, but Storm, you know, it's like they got off scot-free. Uh, and then, you know, they got rid of low pip hits, entire spellment paths are banned. Handsome Fomori is another example of this, let me go find it. Uh, yeah, literally, I can't even use the spell in PvP because it gives, you know, like a 25% mantle. But I can use the version that does the exact same damage and then gives a stronger mantle to Storm, specifically. Because that's a... Uh, <laughs> That's not backwards at all, right, team? Anyway, but yeah, and then, like, you know, it's like I was talking about with Black Widow. Death has a 3 pip damage over time. Meanwhile, Ice, we used to have this, but we don't anymore. Uh, it, it doesn't even do as much damage as Black Widow does, but we just don't have it because <laughs> Ratbeard banned it years ago. So, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's an Ice-specific problem. Ice is the only school that has this issue. And, yeah, I mean, you, you can you can really see, like, even our, our high pip spells just don't have that much damage. I have heard Woolly Mammoth is, uh, like, above the curve or something, but it's nine hull pips. And it's like, if you're using that many pips, it's like, you should really be going for, like, a gambit. <laughs> not, not just a, a basic spell that does 900 base. So, yeah, Isis Library issue is a huge problem, and I hope that the devs can unban some of our cards... I would totally be down to see, uh, like, Polar Swarm return to the game. Um, I don't think they would do Ice Elf, but Polar Swarm, I think, 
isn't too much to ask for, especially since Death still has Black Widow, but knowing the designers, they will probably take the opposite route and then just ban everything that doesn't fall in line with identity. So, fingers crossed, but uh, I have seen the devs desecrate the game before, they will do it again. Now, a really good source of damage for an ice is our gambits. Um, being, you know, obviously, Jin, Oni, and our Scion. But, <laughs> the problem is, Q is, at the moment, set for all three of our gambits. And it's not even because of ice. <laughs> like, like, who sets for ice? Nobody does. Uh, but, they do set for other schools, and other schools, you know, like Myth and Death, have shield gambits. And so, if you try to go for a Scion, you will get Earthquaked because of, you know, it being a shield gambit, or people pack it because uh, there are blade stacking strategies, and Earthquake is kind of your only out for that. So... I mean, it's like, it's it's sort of like a if the shoe fits <laughs> type moment. It's like if they see you going for this, they'll be like, oh, you know, I have that earthquake that I don't pack for this, but it'll work. It'll get me out in a pinch. So let's just go ahead and send it. And then all of a sudden you can't sign on anymore. Um, so there's that. That's real fun. Additionally, our gin doesn't work because people pack eight curse counters because of death. The death school will just pack max three folds and then just send a bunch of vampires and then put a bunch of minus 60 weaknesses on people. So people pack as many curse counters as they can to get around that. But what that means is if they see that you're trying to set up a gin with a bunch of three folds, that type of deal, they will just take those off. And it's like, you can't you can, you just can't set this up it's not because of ice burn gin that people do that uh it's because of death scion and you know things like turmoil oni that type of deal but we just get caught in the crossfire here too for everwinter oni this is our jinx gambit and people will also carry a bunch of trap counters like riding the scales oni's naturalism that type of thing uh, but people will also put Niles Omen on their pet, which is a will cast card that will summon one of these writing scale spells into the person's hand. And you can do this three times per game on demand. So it's like trap stacking. It is a very brainless strategy. And you know, if your deck is set for it, then it, it can work despite how cheesy it is. But you know, if you're just trying to set up traps the old-fashioned way, you know, like uh, taking off people's blades and using a wyvern, maybe throwing on a fuel, doing something else for traps, like uh, the Oni's Destruction spell. It's it's like people will just summon a Riding the Scales into their hand if they don't have it, and then just clear those off, and they get pips out of it. Uh, they don't do this because of ice, again. Uh, they do this because of myth and fire and other trap stacking strategies. I guess the main point I'm trying to make here is this is also hard to pull off unless your deck is specifically set to just you know elemental trap like 10 times <laughs> so and that just brute force this so it's rough uh, but ice's gambits just are not great because the queue is set for it that's uh, basically what I'm trying to say there another thing that has become prevalent in recent months <clears throat> has been dual schooling. For those unaware, you know, dual schooling, as the name would suggest, is when you get damage in both your main school and a second school. And at the moment, in PvP, there are two schools who cannot dual school. <laughs> I'll give you three guesses as to who those are. Okay, time's up. They're Storm and Ice. <laughs> Storm, for obvious reasons, you know, they can't, they can't, they don't have the sustainability to get an off school gambit off. But for Ice, it's because, you know, you could try out dual schooling into a school like Myth. You know, you might want their Jin for, uh, like, just a better shield gambit because it does, you know, a marginally higher amount of damage. But, you know, Ice already has a shield and Jinx gambit, so it's like Scion's also out. But the main thing with it is that our pins suck ass. <laughs> like, like, like you can you can see here, I've got like these death pins and 
you know, they only give three peers with the, uh, the 160 versions and two peers with the 150 versions. So, I mean, Walru is going to make this better uh, because you can just craft the higher tier. But as y'all can see, I only have 137 damage and 16 death peers. That's not nearly enough to make it work. And because of Ice's uh, low stat caps, especially with like, you know, damage and peers, it's like the most I could get uh, in terms of death damage would be 158. And the most pierce I could get would be 40. So it's like, it's, it's just our stat caps and the fact that our pins suck <laughs> are really restricting Ice from being able to dual school and, you know, threaten a death gen, for example, or maybe like a myth oni, <laughs> if you ever really wanted to go for that. But yeah, we would have to shrike to make use of uh, these off school hits. And even still, you know, we'd just be a worse death or myth or, I don't know, fire, <laughs> etc. as a result. The new world of Walru does have me optimistic for this, though. Storm could be good to duel into once Walru comes out, since its base damage is very good. Like, a Storm Scion would be kind of huge, because its base damage is, you know, 1255 without the conditional. And, you know, if I were to drop a Storm Scion on somebody, like, that would be kind of huge. Because, you know, for an Ice, doing that much damage would be super nice. That would be super helpful. But, it's like, dueling into Storm, you would have to worry about other stats like accuracy. And I already have to worry about accuracy because of, uh, you know, packing Kraken to counter overtimes. Um, and honestly, <laughs> one more power pin would kind of fix that for, for Ice. Uh, so it might be on the table team. Well, we'll just have to see how it checks out. New gear could help with the extra jewel slots. Uh, like, I know there's an amulet that gives a circle slot, so I could socket storm damage on that, which would be helpful. Uh, but we'll just, we'll really just have to see how it checks out. Now, in the ranking of all of the schools at max level PvP, Ice is not actually dead last, we are 5th out of 7, and the reason being is because we still have our high resist, even though that's about to get capped, <laughs> so we can only run a maximum of 80 by the uh, We won't be affected so much since we only lose one resist with uh, with my current setup, uh, that gives 81, and I have like Mighty on my pet so I could trade that out for something else anyway, and you know, no one can ward or pin to us anymore like I've seen myths and you know, deaths do before, <laughs> but a cap on resist is still a direct nerf to ice because our whole MO is tankability, so we won't be able to pin to anyone else ourselves. It's like if we struggle with storm, we can't get this extra res, we definitely struggle with balance, and you know, we won't be able to get extra resist here as well, and with flat resist going away, you know, balance is going to be really on top just by default because they do a lot of chip damage. Additionally, we don't have healing pins or spells for that matter, so it's like, what are we really gonna do with our shield pins, you know? It's like, there, there's no longer any reason to run gear with shield pins. So, I mean, we could run block, but as you can see, I have 712 block. <laughs> this is really, really good block. I really cut down on people's crit multipliers with that amount of block, and Adding more, it just, it just, it not only would it not be worth the farm, but it just wouldn't help much in general. Yeah, I feel like uh, Jabalba gear from the new raid is going to be very, 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 very important for ice, especially the boots, uh, because those give two sword pins. It's, uh, it's the Eon template, so it'll give two sword pins and a power pin, uh, along with all the shads. So. It's going to be very, very helpful to have the new raid gear, so I'm definitely going to be going for it. <laughs> I hope that doesn't discourage anyone uh, trying to learn a new setup once the new world drops, but that is most likely what is going to happen. Additionally, the Void Hat, uh, for Jaconical of the Void, I don't have it upgraded yet, but it could be very, very good as well, since it gives the two sword pins at 160, but instead of a shield pin, it gives a power pin, uh, and that could really help a dual school setup. I think I could make a dual school into Storm work because I would be running the Void Hat for extra accuracy and, uh, you know, Shibaba Boots for extra damage. So, hey, you know, <laughs> maybe it's not all bad. Maybe I can actually go for uh, a Storm Scion <laughs> like I wanted to in Wallaroo. So, 
we'll see where that goes. Last on the list, we have all of Ice's counter matchups, of which there are, you know, five. <laughs> uh, there are the obvious Fire and Myth, because of the wheel, but also Storm, as I touched on earlier, because Frostbite is our only card, and that's Fire Identity, not to mention Storm just fundamentally outpaces us with heals, so that's fun. <laughs> and then uh, two fundamentally unwinnable matchups. Our only card gets shifted back to us by balance, and we physically cannot keep up with life seals. Um, the whole balance thing in, you know, gearhead, obviously. So, and that's a total of five unfavorable matchups. So, fire counters our shields and shield gambits with spells like Hellifant. Uh, the matchup is currently rated as a toss-up, but with flat resist going away, it could definitively favor fire in the new updates, as it probably should, you know, because the Rochambeau wheel works like that. Uh, fire is supposed to counter us, but we still bring the rating down to a toss-up just because of stats so i guess we'll see uh storm is one of the two s schools we're supposed to counter but again due to how few cards we have all they have to do is crack in and they have buffed hit on us while all a regular ice can hope to do is spam frostbites and maybe set up a scion if they don't minotaur all the shields off at the moment that matchup is rated as a tilt ice just because of stats but it could just as easily flip to a Storm victory in Waldaroo, just fundamentally, because Ice basically just has to rely on Frostbite, and we naturally struggle with heals. Uh, so, Barry Surprise, Dark and Stormy, even in its nerf state, could keep them ahead of us. Myth shreds shields with a number of spells, like, you know, Betrayal, Minotaur, uh, that type of deal. And they are fundamentally the best school against mitigation effects because they also counter curses. And that, coupled with high pierce, just makes them a nightmare for ice, especially because we struggle with all three other gambits. Uh, this is a safe myth victory for all of those reasons. And you know, myths gambits. I don't have any. I don't have any chain, but uh, we're not that great at removing shields, so they can gin us. We're not that great at countering overtimes, so they can oni us for like quick damage. And we're not that great at countering traps, so they can just sigh on us. So, that's going to be a fun matchup, uh, especially in the new world. Life as a healing school is fundamentally just an awful matchup for us. Um, even after the nerfs, especially to regenerate, burst especially, it's going to be very hard to kill them because the counters just aren't good enough. Uh, we can only hope to outpace them by keeping bubble control and sending maybe a scion or something like that. But depending on the playstyle, they may need they may just feed off the shields and set up their own gambits like a gin, because I mean I do that all my life. And yeah, it's like life with fire identity. That's gonna really screw over ice in the new update. And I would rate this as a safe life victory still. Death's stats are rough for us to go against, but with Ward going away, I think this will remain our best matchup since we're naturally good against all other stuff. And I will be moving this from a safe ice victory down to a likely ice victory, uh, just because it's like, as I said before, they now have to hit us less, and we have to hit them more in order to score a victory, so, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. And then balance is horrendous and will continue to be horrendous for us to go against. This is a safe, balanced victory in every sense of the word. No niche strategy, including the one I'm uploading on Monday, will stand much of a chance because balance just has everything, including high resist. Uh, you can't really frostbite because of gearhead, which is rough. Hydra shuts down our scion while defending them at the same time. It's just a mess. Uh, balance has the exact opposite problem to ice in that their card library is so massive, so they just counter us at every turn. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, these are just a lot of the problems that Ice has at the moment. I liked some of what Liam had to say, but he really just <laughs> did not go over enough. Um, so this video is probably going to end up being super long, but it is what it is. I needed to air it all out, and uh, maybe maybe the devs will watch it. Who knows? <laughs> I've got I've got high hopes and low expectations as always. So. Thank y'all for watching. I've been Ice Gold. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave like 50 comments for the algorithm, and I'll see y'all later.